today for our daily leveled read aloud, we're going to be reading Hometown Turtles by Alexandra Baer. And it's illustrated by Kathy Devendorf. So I thought this would be a great book to read since we are learning about animals in science. So let's go ahead and read about Hometown Turtles. Our strategy focus is Megan learns about helping her favorite animals. As you read, pause and then to think of the main ideas and details to help summarize the story. So remember, pause this video randomly and retell what you've already read in a couple of sentences. Let's go ahead and get started. My favorite animal. One day in late May, our class did surveys of our favorite animals. My friend Claudia chose the penguin because he looks like he's wearing a tuxedo. Mike voted for a cheetah because it's the fastest land animal. Lamar said it's a tie for him between a tyrannosaur and the triceratops, although both are extinct. They died billions of years ago. Megan, what about your favorite animal, my teacher asked. The sea turtle, I said. Why, she asked. Sea turtles have lived in our oceans for more than 100 million years, I explained. Sea turtles love to swim, and they can swim much farther than we can. They also love our state. Every year, female sea turtles swim back here to lay their eggs on Florida beaches. So she lives in Florida. That's interesting, Megan, she said. How do you know so much about sea turtles? During the nesting season, my Aunt Cassie works to help protect sea turtles, I said. This year, she said I could help her, so I've been learning as much as I can before the season starts. Night of the Sea Turtles A few of the class nights after the class survey, Aunt Cassie came to get me. We brought a thermos of chocolate milk. We drove to the beach. I was so excited I couldn't sit still. My aunt told me that humans are a major threat to sea turtles. Some sea turtles die after eating plastic bags that they think are jellyfish. Other sea turtles die after getting caught in huge shrimp nets. In many beach communities, turtles have lost their nesting areas. Also, turtles have been overhunted for their meat, eggs, hides, and oils. The more I learned about sea turtles, the more I wanted to help them. How are we going to find the turtles, I asked. I brought a flashlight, Aunt Cassie said. Won't we have trouble for being on the beach at night? No, we're joining a special group of volunteers, she replied. When we met the rest of the group by the refreshment stand, Aunt Cassie said hello to Dan, our sea turtle guide. As most of you probably know, female turtles come ashore during the late spring and summer to lay eggs, Dan said. If you see a turtle, don't bother it. Just let me know. Make sure not to shine your flashlight too often. You don't want it to scare or disturb the turtles. Let's go, I said to Aunt Cassie. We walked carefully down the steps by the quay. We scanned our flashlights across the shore. The surf was calm beneath the full moon. We could see the outline of the ships on the horizon. Suddenly, I saw parallel tracks in the sand, leading from the ocean. Aunt Cassie, look, I said. I think those are the turtle tracks. We followed the tracks to rise in the sand. The turtle is building her nest above the high water mark, Aunt Cassie whispered. The salt water from the ocean harms the eggs. We crouched down and watched the turtle dig out a nest with her front flippers. Aunt Cassie explained that turtles dig in moist sand so their nests stay intact. When the hole was around 16 inches deep, so that's over a foot, the turtle stopped. My watch read 9 p.m. Then the turtle started releasing eggs. After an hour, she'd laid about 100 eggs. Can you imagine if you had 100 brothers and sisters? That'd be crazy. I found Dan who came over to our nest. He attached a metal tag to the turtle's front flipper. He said the, mental tag would, the metal tag would help scientists keep track of the sea turtle when she returns to lay more eggs. Then my aunt and I helped measure her shell. Before the turtle returned to sea, she buried the eggs in the sand. Even though the nest seemed safe, beach growers, sand cleaning equipment, or animals could easily disturb it and damage the eggs before they hatch. We helped Dan set up a metal cage around the nest to protect it. The cage will stay around the nest until the baby turtles are ready to hatch. I hugged my aunt. I felt very happy. I guess people can make a difference, I said. Hometown Turtles. The next day, the next Monday, I shared with the class a poster I had made about keeping turtles safe. It was part of the report I was going to give. Safety for sea turtles. One, do not disturb turtles or their nest. It's against the law. Two, keep pets away from nesting turtles and hatchlings or baby turtles. Three, do not cover turtle tracks in the sand. Four, do not shine car lights on beaches where turtles nest. Hatchlings might crawl toward the headlights instead of towards the ocean. In my class, I taped my poster on the board. I began my report by telling all about the night with Aunt Cassie. Then I held up a picture of baby sea turtles. In about 60 days, the baby sea turtles will hatch, I said to the class. 
They are tiny, squirmy, and cute. They crawl in a group towards the water, and then they swim many miles to the open ocean. Many sea turtles hatchlings won't survive the first year. Seabirds can swoop down and eat them. Sharks, ghosts, crabs, and fish like to eat hatchlings too. But humans are more dangerous to sea turtles than any of these creatures. I'm sending my poster about sea turtles to an organization that protects them, I said at the end of my report. The best posters are put on a website. Everyone who wants to make more posters can help me. The class got into groups to do a poster. Each group did a poster about a different turtle. Claudia's group read about loggerheads for its poster. They learned that most sea turtles that lay eggs in Florida are loggerheads. Loggerheads lay eggs in, from late April through September. Wow, so loggerheads are laying eggs right now. They use their strong jaws to crush mollusks and crabs. They have reddish brown shells and they can grow up to three feet long. Some weigh as much as 350 pounds. Mike's group learned about the green turtle and the leatherback turtle. They lay eggs on our beaches, too. The green turtle is named for its greenish yellow shell. It's about the same time, size as a loggerhead. Leatherbacks are the largest reptiles in the world. Instead of a hard shell, they have a tough, dark skin with white spots. Leatherbacks can grow up to be six feet long, and they can weigh about 1,100 pounds. So you can see all the drawings that the class did. So here's the loggerhead sea turtle, the green sea turtle, the leatherback sea turtle, Kemp's Ridley sea turtle, and the Hawksbill sea turtle. Lamar's group made a poster about the hawkbill sea turtle. The hawkbill swims off the Florida coast. It's named for its hook bill, which is used to dig for food in tropical reefs. In the past, people wanted the hawkbill's reddish brown shell so much that they paid as much for $100 a pound for it. Today, it is against the law to buy or sell sea turtle shells. My group made another poster about the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle, which also swims off of Florida. It weighs about 90 pounds and has olive or gray green shell that is around two feet long. The Kemp's Ridley is one of the most endangered animals in the world. So remember, endangered means that it's close to extinction, and extinction means that there are no more of those animals left. They've all died off. After we've made our posters, we set them up. We sent them off to the website. We'll see which ones get put on the site. We also voted for our favorite animals again. This time, the sea turtle was the favorite. Awesome job, you guys, with this read. We are going to put our response questions in the description box below for you to think about, write about, or talk about with someone. I hope you enjoyed this read a lot, and I'll see you in the next one.